If you've been following the channel, you'll know I've been playing around with a suspension upgrade on Bob, the BMW S1000RR that I have. We basically removed the electronic damping system that comes factory fitted on the motorcycle and replaced it with a high-end by Tubo race suspension, which is manually adjusted. And, uh, you know, I wasn't unhappy with the, what we previously had on the bike, but man, this by turbo system is next level in terms of stability and feel and handling and uh, I'm just blown away by how good it is. What I want to talk about in this particular video is the settings that we settled on um, in for street riding specifically and the things that we'll talk about is the geometry of the motorcycle, the way we set it up from a geometry perspective, the preload settings and my thinking behind the damping side of it. But before I do that, I want to make a couple of points. Number one, just because we've set up the settings on this particular bike doesn't mean it's going to work for your bike. Um, you know, this bike, these suspension components, if you have one of these, this would be a good starting point, I guess. But I would always recommend that you go and talk to the experts, just like I did. I went and talked to Joe Salter at Ride Dynamics, and I asked him about it, and I got his advice. I'm not a suspension expert, you probably aren't, and I would say that that would be the number one piece of advice I could give people. The second thing is that just because these settings work for me doesn't mean they're gonna work for you. You know, I, I have a particular riding style, I have a particular bike, I have a particular preference around, you know, the way that I enter corners and things like that, so it's gonna be different. So just because they work for me doesn't mean gonna work for you. As I said, they may be a reasonable starting point, but always seek advice, uh, particularly from the experts who know what they're talking about. Um, the final thing is, when we run through the details here, I'm not gonna talk specifically about exactly what settings I made. If you want those details, then you can look down below and there's information in the show notes. What I'm gonna talk more about is my thinking behind it, the strategies that we took in terms of those three particular things. So I hope you get something out of this video and enjoy it. And uh, uh, that's it, let's get into the content. The first thing I wanna talk about is the geometry of the motorcycle. And when we're talking about geometry, you're putting or installing a new suspension setup, you know, a rear shock and forks or fork cartridges on the front. You've got to make choices about where you position those elements and how long you make the rear shock. You know, are you going to drop the forks in the, in the triple clamps? Are you going to raise them up or something like that? Because it's going to change the nature of that motorcycle and the way it steers. The rear shock, you've got to think about the length of the shock. Are you going to make it a standard length or shorter or longer or something like that? So when we're talking about geometry, that's specifically what we're talking about. So I want to show you a little video that I made a little earlier, which describes exactly what I did to this motorcycle, beginning with the change in the profile of the rear tire. So uh, take a look. I want to explain the changes we made to the geometry of the motorcycle and where we ended up having the settings after installing the Biturbo race suspension. In a previous video, we talked about the fitting of a set of Pirelli V4 SP supercourses, and we went from a 255 rear tire to a 260. That resulted in the rear axle, the center of the axle being raised eight millimeters. So in effect, we lifted the back a little bit and we created a steeper front end. We took it for a ride and the thing handled beautifully. And we talked to Joe uh, down there at Ride Dynamics about why that was the case with this particular bike. We then went to the suspension upgrade and we installed a Biturbo XXZ rear shock. We made that a standard length that matched exactly the length of the rear shock that we removed uh, that was originally fitted to the bike. We also installed a set of Biturbo EBH cartridges to the front end and when we, f when we fitted those forks back into the triple clamps, we actually dropped the forks down in the triple clamp against where it was originally. So in the original configuration there's about three millimeters showing, it's actually one ring on the 1516 model S1000RR. So by dropping the fork tubes down in the triple clamp, that one ring, we effectively raised the front three millimeters. So keep in mind, we've now got the back is lifted eight millimeters and the front is three millimeters higher. We then went out, we took it for a ride. And what was interesting is it almost felt too stable. Like it was super stable, that was the first thing I noticed. It held the line really well, but it didn't quite turn in the same way. So we made some adjustments. 
The first thing I did was we shortened the length of the rear shock by two millimeters at the shock. And in effect, that would alter the rear height in the vicinity of around four millimeters. The front, we moved back to the original position and then went one ring further. So we've actually pushed the forks up through the triple clamp and we end up in a situation where it's three millimeters lower at the front. So in essence, we've got three millimeters lower at the front and four millimeters higher at the back. So it's a very similar uh, geometry to that original situation where we just put the 260 tire on it. And that's where we've ended up today. And the, in, in combination with the settings that we've got with the preload and the damping, the thing handles like an absolute dream. The second thing I want to talk about is the preload settings. Now, when we're talking about preload, we're talking about uh, putting pressure on the spring. So for example, if you have a shock absorber, you know, fully extended out of the motorcycle, well, there's a degree of pressure on that spring. Preload, if you add preload, basically you're compressing the spring, you're pushing pressure on the spring. And if you're releasing preload, then you're releasing pressure from the spring. So the, the length of the shock doesn't alter, but the pressure on the spring does right at the beginning point. Now, when we're talking about preload, my understanding of the whole thing is the goal or the objective is to set it so that the rider sag puts you in an optimal position, particularly in a cornering scenario. And it works something like this. When you, get, when you sit on the bike, if it's set up properly on the right springs, the bike will sag around about one third of its travel. So that's called rider sag. Then when you go into a corner, there are gonna be cornering forces applied to the motorcycle. It's gonna compress more and it will move down, you know, even up to another third. Now, if you have good throttle control, you have good uh, riding technique, then what's gonna happen is you're going to lift the bike up into the sweet spot, which is gonna be the middle third of the suspension. So that's the overall objective here. It's to set up the preload so that we're not too low where it's a bit harsh, uh, you know, or too far down in the travel, which is where it's gonna be harsher, or not too high where it's gonna be springier but it's gonna be in that sweet spot where the, where the shock absorber is designed to absorb bumps and also you know, push the tire down into, in, into hollows and spaces. So uh, it's keeping that wheel on the bitumen the way it was designed to do. Now, the settings that we actually settled on, right, I just went to the Bituvo manual, which was provided with the parts when you buy the, um, you know, these Bituvo race suspension kits. You download the PDF and it provides a guidance on the range of settings. So what would be the minimum sag? What would be the maximum rider sag? And you wanna be within that space. So the smaller number means more compression so it doesn't travel as far. The bigger number would mean less preload so that it, it compresses more and it travels further down when the rider gets on the bike. So what I did is I chose to go more towards the shorter end of the, the rider sag. So it's the smaller number. And the reason I did that is I wanted a bit of a com compromise between range riding and track riding. So I kind of do a bit of both, but I ride fairly hard on the ranges and that, and I kind of like that firm feel. So I just went towards the shorter end of the, the, the numbers or the range. If you want to know exactly what I did in terms of preload for my body weight and these parts, have a look below. The details are in the show notes. Let's talk about the damping settings specifically. Now, when we're talking about damping, there's two parts to this. There's compression damping and there's rebound damping. And what that means is compression damping is the, the when, when the spring goes, uh, when the bike, I should say, goes over a bump, the spring needs to compress. And when we damp it, right, that's going to affect the rate of compression, you're right? So if we back off the, the damping, it's gonna compress quicker. And if we increase the damping, it's gonna slow that rate down. And it's the same for the rebound. The rebound is when it comes back. If we increase the damping, it's gonna slow down the rebound. If we decrease the damping, it's gonna come back uh, quicker. Now, this particular bike or, or particular suspension kit that we got from Bitubo has compression and rebound damping on the front. And it has the same on the back, except it has the addition of high and low speed damping. So you can adjust both rebound and compression for low speed type bumps and also high speed type bumps. And the difference between these, and this is the way it was explained to me by uh, Joe Salter down at Ride Dynamics, and I thought it was a great explanation, 
if you have to hit a, a significant bump, like a step or a speed bump or something that you might experience on the bitumen, when you hit that, particularly at speed, the, the rear wheel needs to move up quickly to negotiate that bump and that would be a high speed compression right, as it goes up. And high speed rebound would be as you come off the bump, it's got to bounce back down. And low speed would be more of those rolling type bumps, you know, where there's low speed, low amount of movement required to negotiate those. So it's slowly compressing and then slowly rebounding. Now, the way that, or the thinking that I had for the damping settings was specifically this. On a road, there's gonna be, you know, a lot more higher speed bumps. It's gonna be bumpier, particularly on the ranges that we've got up here in North Queensland where the roads are crap at the moment, particularly after a couple of years of rain. So for me, what I wanted it to do was absorb or compress fairly quickly, uh, particularly the high speed bumps. So I backed off the compression damping for the high speed compression and then increase the amount of rebound. So I wanted it to absorb the bump fairly quickly, but then slowly go back, not at the same rate. And that's been my thinking for a long time. And I've always found it quite useful to think that way. With the compression, uh, with the low speed side of it, right, it was a little bit um, a different setting, particularly on the compression side of it. Now, I had the same thing for the front. And if you wanna know exactly what I did with my compression and rebound settings, then have a look below, the details are there. But like I said, I just wanted to explain the thinking that I had behind it. Now, if we go to track, it's going to alter because uh, on the track, it's gonna be a much smoother surface and uh, it won't be the same as riding on these crappy roads that we've got to ride on in uh, North Queensland. That's it, that's my thinking about damping. So let me wrap this up with a couple of key points. Uh, first of all, I, I just wanna say, the settings on that I've shown you in this particular bike and thinking uh, around how I set up the suspension, that works for me. So it doesn't mean it's gonna necessarily work for you, but it might give you some clues and it might give you a bit of a starting point, particularly if you have a bike and uh, similar to mine and the same components from Bitubo. So uh, the key is always seek advice from the experts, just like I did. I went and talked to Joe Salter at Ride Dynamics and asked him specifically, what is the best suspension for this bike? What are the best settings to start with? And then we went from there. So uh, ask the experts. The final thing is I'm super happy with the transition that we've made, you know, particularly for street riding. I haven't taken it on the track yet, but that will happen over the next few months uh, on the Townsville track, Menton Park. But for street riding, I'm super happy with the, the result that we've got. The stability is definitely different, right? It's very stable. It holds the line in a way that I hadn't experienced quite before. And the balance between the front and back for me has been like a significant jump. There was always this little bit of a, I couldn't quite get the back and the front to match uh, on the original factory uh, components. But with the Biturbo suspension, that has been probably the most amazing standout to me. And uh, I'm super happy. So uh, that's it. There's nothing now uh, to do, but go and ride this thing. Mm.